What is going on, people? It's Elijah from my chargeback. And today it is time for our fifth Sunday Crypto Scam Q&A special. Your questions, our answers. So let's get right down to it. Hi, Elijah. How do you get your money back if the scammer is out of the country? At the moment, my funds are frozen. Found the KYC, just need to get a seizure warrant to recover funds. How would you get a seizure warrant? Okay. You know, something about this question seems like it's trying to throw people off a little bit. But that's okay. I'm going to leave that part and I'm going to answer it anyway because there are legitimate points to it. So, how do you get your money back with the scammers out of the country? Well, it could be a criminal case. It could be a civil case. It basically goes the same way it would be if they're in the country. You're just using resources on the ground there, like lawyers, prosecutors, and other people who negotiate. Or you're extraditing them to the country that you live in. That's the short answer. Now, you're saying that your funds are frozen, but you need a seizure warrant to recover them. Now, let me tell you why this sounds fishy to me. You see, in order for them to have been frozen, they would already have to have been found. And a search and seizure warrant is something that is issued much earlier. And a recovery, as in them going back to you, would come at the end of a criminal trial with something like restitution or disgorgement. So I think that either A, you're trying to throw people off, or B, uh, somebody did a very poor job of explaining to you what's really going on because the point where you get your funds back would be at restitution or disgorgement because they're already frozen. You don't need any search or seizure things to do that. You need the court order at the end of the trial. Moving on. Hi, Elijah. Few questions. My cryptocurrency scam happened about six months ago. It's been a while. I know the scammers cashed out my money a long time ago. Is there still the chance to recover my lost money? I believe that fraudulent cryptocurrency platform is in China, and America and China don't have a friendly relationship. So let's say you end up finding my money. How are you going to get that money back? I understand it all depends on the case, but how long entire recovery process would take in general? Okay. Um, let's talk through a few things here. Number one, yes, if it happened six months back, uh, there is a likely chance that it's been cashed out. All right, there are certain scenarios in which they don't, but I highly doubt it, although there really hasn't been an insane amount of market volatility like there was during the crash. So, you know, maybe if it's a larger criminal organization, it's still in the blockchain, but not necessarily so. What would probably happen is that either A, there's going to be a criminal trial, or B, you're going to get a whole bunch of people together with this scammer, uh, and you're going to have negotiations, you're going to have a civil trial, something of that sort that would necessitate being back that equivalent in fiat, or if the equivalent can be found in crypto, then that's what would happen. Now, you're making an assumption here that they're in China. All right, this is a big assumption, and it's not an invalid assumption, all right? Plenty of crypto scammers in China, but there are also plenty of Chinese crypto scammers abroad. A lot of them are operating out of Hong Kong and Vietnam. A lot of them are operating out of Australia and out of the United States. Okay, um, keep up with your crypto news, and you'll find that out pretty quickly. A lot of Chinese nationals doing it out there. So you don't actually know that they're in China, and even if they are in China... Because you got your KYC from your blockchain forensics. Um, there's a step in between that they're going to have to take. You see, crypto is illegal in China. Really, really illegal. China sends you to the black box prisons because it's China. So that means that there has to be a bank that served as a go-between outside of China to get the crypto that was converted into fiat and then send that through a bank wire to the KYC in China. So there is an access point outside of, China, outside of China if, in fact, the KYC is in China. But again, you don't know that if you don't have the KYC, 
no blockchain forensics, no KYC. So let's start there. Now, regarding what role we play in this, depends on what the procedure is where they are. It could be that they're simply extradited and there's a whole bunch of people coming to the police with them. That happens. In that case, it's a criminal case where our role as providing the blockchain forensics and helping you with the police ends and the police take over and prosecuting. The same thing could happen in a foreign country if you or another group of victims chooses to go after them that way there. It could be that somebody in our network or somebody that you choose to go with on the ground is executing negotiations or a civil case. Most of what we are going to do on the most basic level is going to start with the blockchain forensics. And then we are basically consulting and working as a conduit on the way for other parts that are the execution mechanism for the recovery, if that makes sense. Now, this is really important, and I want you to understand something, okay? Uh, you want to know how long it takes? Personally, I would say that you pr should prepare yourself for at least a year and a half. Um, is it possible that it's shorter? Sure. There are scenarios where it's a few months, okay? It could be that it's on like Binance or Coinbase or Kraken and uh, it happens to be that there's an equivalent amount of crypto in that wallet because they're still scamming from that wallet. And they're just like, you know what? Open a wallet on a platform and we're just going to send it back to you. That does happen. I wouldn't bank on that, but it is a possibility. Um, but really, you should be prepared for a year and a half because one way, whether it's going to go criminal or civil, it's going to take a while. Uh, and you have to be ready to fight through a few things. You have to be ready to fight through some adversity on the way. And sometimes it even doesn't work. That's not to say that it won't at all. But it is something you should be aware of. Regardless, you have to be ready to work through it and to learn and to be involved along the way. Uh, if it's criminal, for example, it's probably going to be two years. Two or three years is not uncommon for a criminal trial. Whether it's inside the United States or abroad. I know we have a lot of viewers that aren't in the U.S. Um, in Western countries, it's just, it's going to take longer. That's all I can tell you. Um, so you have to be ready to do what you have to do to keep yourself mentally in the game. And not let yourself get down. And this is a very difficult task. I've always said that everybody who comes to us has been conditioned from e-commerce and retail that everything is instant, right? I buy something off of Amazon. I get it. I smash it on the floor with glee. And then I demand a refund and it comes instantly. And they take it back the next day. Throw that world out the door, okay? You know, and the great example is obviously the Bernie Madoff case. All right, you think the people in the Bernie Madoff case didn't get their money? No, they did, but, you know, it took five years or ten years in some cases. I'm not saying that this is what it's going to be. I'm merely saying that you should be prepared for a year and a half. All right, that's doing yourself a service, and that doesn't mean that you should give up right there. It's not just your fight. It, it's the fight of millions of people across the globe. In every country, and they get scammed out of billions upon billions of dollars in crypto. So it is a fight that has to be had because it's your willingness, if nothing else, to get that blockchain forensics and march down to the police and demand that they get off their butt and get you that KYC. Because that's what's really pushed this whole thing. We ourselves have worked with over 450, I think 500 now, different law enforcement departments across the globe, okay? And we did this earlier with banks in the early days of the company where we have to pioneer this with them. We have to educate them on what they can do because they don't necessarily know that, all right? Let's say you're in a big city. Okay, they probably have some concept of it, but you know, not everybody lives in a big city, all right? So it's important that you do it. This is what gets regulators to move. A uh, great example, Australia, probably the greatest example of all this. Uh, when we started doing crypto with Australia, Australia was like, what is this? Australian police were like, what is this? Now, this is several years ago. Okay, now Australia created an entire national police unit dedicated to it. And it's because so many people came to them saying, hey, 
I just got defrauded out of $50,000 worth of Bitcoin. All right. So if you want to be part of the solution, not only your solution, but the solution that's going to stop and to help scam victims down the road, you have to take that first step. Now, I'm going to leave that question there and I'm going to move on. Hi, Elijah. A friend that I met on WhatsApp has been encouraging me to use an Ethereum mining D app after helping me trade $15,000 in USDT and make it into $40,000. I can't access the 40000 yet because it will require a $7,000 fee to withdraw the money and close the account, but I don't have it, so she says that I can come up with it with only a $1,500 deposit into this Ethereum mining D app. Is that true? No. No, 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 there. I sometimes have to say it like that to my four-year-old when they get a little cranky. I'm saying it to you because I want to emphasize it, okay? Ethereum gave up on proof of work. That's mining. I believe back in September, October, something like that, when they made the hard fork and stopped being a proof of work blockchain and moved to a proof of stake. There is no mining on Ethereum. All right, there is just nothing but a facade to get you to pay another $1,500. And no, if you are new to crypto, you should not be using dApps. While dApps have their function, for those who are seasoned crypto investors, uh, they are not something that a novice should be using. Okay, you need training wheels before you get to use something like that. All right, so no, no, and no. All right, and no. There's no $40,000, all right? What we have here is a pig butchering scam, and this is how most pig butchering scams work. I'll bet you that this she said, oh, I texted the wrong person. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, how's it going? I made a bunch of money with digital currency, and she sent you a few screenshots of how she made, I don't know, $100,000 out of like $5,000 in USDT. Now, I'm going to tell you something. USDT does not have that kind of volatility. Go check its here charts. There is no way. Even if you were selling it, oh, it went up a little, sell it, up, it went down a little, buy it, up, it went up a little. No, that's not going to happen. Certainly not that quickly. If it does, it would be over years of doing it. And I mean years of meticulously following the movement throughout the minutes because it just doesn't have that volatility. Now, it could meet the same fate as Terra Luna and just totally crash and bottom out because it algorithmically breaks. But no, there's no way. The only thing that has happened thus far is a pig butchering scammer took $15,000 from you. That's it. All right, what you need to do is you need to click the link below and fill out that form and talk to us about your case and let's get through some stuff. Let's go through some blockchain forensics and let's move from there. All right. You cannot let those pig butchering scammers do that to you. You can't let them make you think that. Please, let's move on to our last question. Hang on. All right, here we are. Hi, Eliza. I got caught in a crypto scam about a few months ago. But the thing is, I never actually opened any crypto wallets or went to any exchanges to buy Bitcoin or anything. I don't have any wallet addresses or hash IDs. I just went to the scammer's website, paid via credit card, uh, and it was kind of like just buying anything online. So what do I do? Okay, so your concern is that you don't have any of the evidence that would be needed for a crypto trace. Um, I'm going to tell you exactly what you do. You click the link below and you ask for a chargeback service. That's the answer because what you have is a chargeback. Now, I want to make something clear. Not all crypto scams involve the actual transfer, buying, selling, or anything of crypto. They simply pretend that it's a crypto platform and take your credit card. So you do a chargeback. And this does happen from time to time. Um, not everybody knows what crypto is supposed to look like. And if you don't know what it looked like, you wouldn't know any better. So in some ways... Uh, you have lucked out a little bit because it's a straightforward chargeback. I know we chargebacks for breakfast. Uh, call us. 
fill out the form. I'm going to leave that at that. Folks, there's a lot going on in the world of crypto every day. So I want you to keep up with everything. And you know what? I want you to talk to me. All right. If you think you've been the victim of a scam, click the link below. Tell us everything that happened. And one of our team will reach out to you and talk everything through. All right. And you know what? Even if you just like seeing me ramble on camera and help you understand what it is that you need to be doing to fight your crypto scam. Hey, click like. We'd appreciate it. I appreciate it. The whole My Chargeback team appreciates it. All right, ask us questions. We're here to help you. Folks, that's going to do it for today. I've been Elijah. We'll see you next time.